Hi, welcome to another video. Great to have you here. Now, if you've followed along the other videos on my channel or maybe also watched some other tutorials, you probably always saw some setup like this one here. Not sure if it was in JS Fiddle, but you certainly saw the setup where you simply dropped in a script import, took control over a part of your DOM with the L property and output some data there. There's nothing wrong with that setup. That's a fine way of using Vue.js and might be the best way if you are simply controlling tiny parts of your DOM. But if you're building bigger or even medium sized applications, that might not be your preferred way because it also doesn't integrate very well into your maybe existing workflow. If you're already building and bundling SaaS code, well, you're not really doing the same for your Vue.js code and you might also want to split your Vue.js code up over multiple files and so on. Therefore, in this video, I'll show you how to easily get started with a nice setup for a bigger or medium sized Vue.js application using Webpack as a build tool and as you will see, it's only a couple of steps and you're ready to go. So let's jump in. In order to get a nice pre-configured workflow, which you can of course fine tune to your needs, I'm going to use the Vue CLI here. Now I already Googled for it, Vue CLI, and then here we get two interesting links to first two search results that should be. Let's open the first one, the GitHub page of the Vue CLI. There you can learn more about it, you can read what it really does, but I'm of course also telling you. The Vue CLI is a nice little tool which makes scaffolding out pre-configured Vue projects very simple. Now with project I mean a basic folder structure and the basic workflow setup using Webpack, giving you some commands you can run to bundle your code, to build it, to split it up over multiple files and to have it then running on a development server in the end, all with one command and a second command which allows you to build your files for production. That's awesome. Of course, you could set up such a workflow on your own, but you can also fine tune an existing one, whatever you prefer. I'm going to use the CLI to quickly get started. Now, we also learned how to install the CLI on this page, so why don't we follow these steps here? To install the CLI, we're going to use npm. So you need to have node, node.js installed on your computer. You can find it on node.js.org and it's just a server side language, JavaScript on the server to be precise. We're not needing it because we're going to write node.js code, but it has a package manager which ships with node.js, which is the de facto standard for managing your JavaScript packages also for front-end development what, which we're doing here. So therefore install Node.js and you should have the npm command available thereafter. And with that we can install a global package on our machine. We do this by adding minus g. Now on Mac and Linux you're going to have to add a sudo in front of it to get the right, uh, well, rights to install something globally. And then the name of the package is viewCLI. Now here I need to enter my password. You might not be prompted to do so, and then it should install the Vue CLI package globally on your machine, which means thereafter you will have it available from the command line by typing a simple command in any place on your machine. I will see you once this is finished. So the installation of the CLI just finished without an error here, and with that installed, we already can start using it. Now how do we use it? Let's go back to the Google search. We also have a second finding here. Now, that is a template we can use with the Vue CLI, the Webpack template. A full list of all the available templates can be found on the Vue CLI GitHub page if you scroll down a bit here. Now, templates are really just, well, the templates for the project setup you want to use. You could use a Webpack template or a simplified one without unit tests and so on. You can also choose Browserify if you want that or a simple template, which basically is the same approach we used in JS Fiddle and the other videos, but now in your local environment, in your browser. Well, that are all the templates you can choose. I'm going to use the Webpack simple one for this video here because, well, it's a quick and easy Webpack template to get started with. In order to use it, we have to go back to the command line and in the command line you have to go into a folder where you want to create your new project folder and there you can then simply type Vue since we installed the Vue CLI in it, then the name of the template you want to use, Webpack simple in my case here, and then the name of the folder you want to create. I'm going to name it Vue Webpack but of course you may choose any name you like. 
Hit enter and this will install this or set up this template, this project. Here you can enter project name. If you just hit enter, it will pick the default between the parentheses. The same for the description, for the offer and you're done. And with that, you got it installed. And here you see the next steps. We should CD into the newly created folder here, UVAC Webpack. Thereafter, we have to run npm install because this template doesn't install the dependencies or this command doesn't install the dependencies our project need. Because of course, we do have a more complex workflow here with a couple of dependencies, a couple of third-party packages we use, and we need to install those packages with npm install. Now, this will take a couple of seconds because it installs Webpacks, various loaders to, well, work with Webpack and so on. As a side note, if Webpack is totally new to you, definitely check out some dedicated tutorials. I'm not going to explain Webpack in this video, I'm just explaining how to use the CLI to quickly get started with such a workflow. Now after all these uh, dependencies have been installed, we can let run the last command if you remember it. It was npm run dev and this will start the development workflow. That means it will bundle our project and it will start up a development server. So a little server which runs, runs on our machine driven by Node.js, another reason why we needed to install it, which will host our application so that we can see it running on our machine without deploying it to an actual server. Let's have a look at it. We see it here in the browser. It should have opened a tab automatically, otherwise see it at localhost 8080. And this is the basic application this template ships with. This is how we can install such a template with the CLI. But now let's also have a look what got installed in the first place, which folders and files were created for us. I'm in WebStorm, the IDE I'm using for development. And of course you could use another IDE or editor like Adam, Sublime, Visual Studio Code, they should all work fine. And here we see the folds and folders the view CLI created for us when we chose that Webpack simple template. We get the node modules folder holding all our dependencies like Webpack itself and a couple of other dependencies we need for that workflow. Vue.js of course is also included there. And we can see a full list of the dependencies installed here in the package.json. As you can see there's only one runtime dependency, Vue, and a couple of development only dependencies which are needed for that workflow. So that's one thing. But besides that, we also get this source folder. And that source folder is important because here we're going to develop our application. And now here we already see something very strange, this .view file here. Now what is that? Until now, if you watched my other videos, we only worked with JS Fiddle where we had one single file where the script was in. So we would have expected a .js file here or simply an HTML file. Well, we do have an HTML file here, index.html. This is the file which will actually get served and it's pretty empty, but it does have two interesting things. It does have a div with the ID app. Well, we know this from the JS Fiddle examples and it imports a script. So it looks like we're importing some script which will then again take over this ID um, or this app div here. And that is indeed the case. The question just is, well, where does this build.js script come from? This is the bundle created by Webpack and it bundles all our scripts in the source folder. It starts with the main.js file. This is just how it's set up. You can check this in the Webpack config file. Here you see the entry point. Again, not going to go through this file in detail, but you just see where it starts, which loaders it applies to transform these files and what it outputs, the build.js file, which we import in the index.html file. So if we have a look at the main.js file, we see it's relatively simple. We do create a view instance there. We take over the element here with the app selector, but then we do something strange. We call this render method here. Now what's the render method doing? The render method is a built-in method of view instance knows, which basically means replace the part you're selecting the DOM here with some other code. Now the default behavior of Vue.js is to select a certain part in the DOM like we did it in the other widgets with JS Fiddle with the L property here. So this div with the app ID, for example, and then take this DOM as a template where we could use string interpolation and so on. But as you can clearly see, this div here is pretty empty. There's nothing in between. We're not having a paragraph where we output a title or something like this. So we're clearly not following the approach we saw thus far. 
So what are we doing here instead? Well, we're still selecting this part, but the render method now overrides it. It tells Vue.js, don't use the DOM as your template, instead just use it as a hook and now override it with some other template, some other HTML code, you could say. Now, the render function simply takes an input here, which is provided by Vue.js, which is a function which gets executed in the end. But the interesting thing here is not how this function works. That's a relatively complicated one. The interesting thing is what we pass as an argument to this callback function, this h function here. And that's app, which we're importing from the app.view file. Now let's open that file and wow, that certainly looks strange. Here we got a template at the top, then we got a script tag, and then we got some styles. .view files are special files in Vue.js which allow us to store all our template, our script, and our styles in one file. We can therefore split our Vue.js app into logical pieces, components, you learned about this in one of my earlier videos, and each component could live in a Vue.js file, in a, excuse me, in a .view file, and each component of course has at least a template, so something we render, some HTML code, we store that between template tags, and you always need these template tags. And then we have maybe a script, we don't need it necessarily, but if we want to have some logic, we probably do need, and probably also optionally, we do have some styles we apply to this application. That's important, these styles by standard are applied to the whole application, they are not scoped to this file, though we could force this by adding scoped here as an attribute to style, just to say this right away. With that, you're telling Vue.js, please only apply these styles to this file, to this template up here. If you don't have scoped here, they will be applied to your whole application. So, but back to this template. Here we do have some HTML code, and here one important restriction is that inside of this template, we must have only one root element. So this div in this case here. It's not allowed to, let's say, have another div next to it. This will throw an error because you must only have one root element. A lot of talking about these view files, but what does it do here in the end? Well, Webpack has a special package, the view loader, which knows how to handle .view files. What the view loader will do is, it will take this file, transform our template to HTML code, kind of. You can, of course, represent HTML elements with JavaScript code. It transforms it to JavaScript code, I wanted to say, right? So, to JavaScript code. It will also pack in our script part here. It will add our styles to the top of our index.html file in the head section. And therefore, it allows us, since we only have JavaScript here, all this is transformed to JavaScript, to bundle this, to run, to pass this JavaScript code to the render function, which needs JavaScript code, which it renders in the DOM in the end, which it executes in the end. It does all that for us. Therefore, one single bundle gets created, but it gives us the nice possibility of splitting up our code into multiple files, of using this dot view file concept to have a clear separation of the different components in our application. Now here, we're not really using a component. This is kind of our root component, if you want to think of it. We're just taking this app.view file, the template and the script of it, and we're rendering this and replacing our selected part in the DOM here with the app selector. But in the next video, you will see how we can use .view files to actually create multiple components and work with them. I hope this video was helpful for learning about the Vue CLI, how to quickly get started with a better workflow with a local project using Webpack, and to at least dive into the basics of these strange .vue files which make life really easier in the end. Would be great to see you in the other videos. Bye.